You might think a warehouse tour would be boring. Not this one. That's not bourbon in a glass, is it? Oh, yeah. <laughs> All right. What is up, YouTube? Welcome back to the channel. Michael and I are back in action, and today we're taking a look at the warehouse. If you're new to the channel, we welcome you to check out our first three videos in this series. The first of which we took a look at the brew house. The second of which we took a look at the cellar, which I'm standing in right now. And the third of which we took a look at our packaging line, which is to my left. Michael and I are getting all technological in our old age. I'm, I'm untethered now with the big microphone. I have mobile ability now. I can go behind the tank. I can come out from behind the tank. I can walk backwards and forwards and Michael doesn't have to run, run ragged trying to keep up with me. So we're making progress here on the channel. So a little philosophy about the warehouse. Why did we build an 80,000 square foot warehouse with this small pointed footprint that we had that we built in 2017? Well, we built it out of necessity to remain creative and flexible. If, you, if you're new to the channel or if you're familiar with the channel, this is a theme that you hear a lot from me specifically. Everything that Treehouse does enables us to remain creative and nimble and flexible so that all the ideas that we have, the variety of things that we make has no bounds. So I wanna tell you the story about this warehouse. Now, the footprint that we're standing on right now was originally built in 2017. Treehouse purchased 68 acres of land on this property to build this facility which became too small very, very quickly. If you come on over here, the original wall, the original footprint of the brewery kind of ended right here where this garage door is. Now, previously our packaging line was in the area that I just walked through. In order for us to expand the cellar, we had to move the packaging line to the side. This area that the packaging line now resides in used to be can storage. Now, when you see can storage in the warehouse, you'll understand why we needed more space. So. In 2019, we were able to purchase the land adjacent to the brewery and begin conceptualizing and constructing our warehouse. This used to be the old footprint wall, and this connector, this garage door, is where the old footprint ends and the new footprint begins, which is what we call the connector, and that's where we're gonna start our tour. All right, welcome to the connector. This little section right here stages the day's goods. Sometimes we have finished goods that are making their way from the edge of the canning line down into the cooler, which we've seen downstairs, which we'll take a look at again in this video. And then we have goods coming up from the warehouse for use in production. Right here on the right, we have obviously unlabeled cans. Those are gonna make their way onto the canning line tomorrow. Over here on the left, we have some labels that had made their way up for today's patching run that are gonna make their way back downstairs into label storage, which we'll also see as part of this video. And then over here on the left, we have some in-process barrel-aged beer, which has been filled in the cellar and is going to make its way down to barrel storage, which we will also take a look at in this video. And finally, in this connector, in this moment in time, we have finished goods. This particular beer right here is Trail Breaker. This guy's actually making its way up to the cooler for sale and retail. It's just waiting to be picked up by somebody in retail any second now. The last thing I want to talk about upstairs before we make our way downstairs is the freight elevator. The freight elevator is an essential part of this warehouse because the, the warehouse sits on a different grade than the brewery, which we'll see in just a minute and we'll talk about that in just a minute. But essentially, everything from the warehouse level has to come on the freight elevator up 22 feet to this landing so that it can make its way into the brewery and vice versa. So let's get down into the warehouse. All right, so we are down on the warehouse level, and I want to talk a little bit about the construction of the warehouse and I guess how difficult it is and how quickly we did it. So I mentioned upstairs that it was in the middle of 2019 that we knew that we needed more space. And in the middle of 2019, we were able to purchase the land that the warehouse sits on. It was a team effort. And one of the proudest things in Treehouse history is that we were able to actually conceptualize, construct, and build this warehouse from the ground up in just under five months during the late autumn and winter of 2019 into 2020. This was incredibly impressive stuff and it enabled us to stay on a trajectory of creativity and product variety that we've been able to maintain until this day. We've never talked about it until now, but 
the amount of energy that needed to be expended, the amount of personal investment and treehouse investment that had to go into making this warehouse a possibility so that we could re remain free and creative cannot be overstated. Construction of this warehouse was immensely challenging. There's a huge grade change right here, which you can see with the retaining wall. It's 22 feet up on the retaining wall, and it's eight feet from the grade level of the, of the brewery to the top of the warehouse. One of the nice things about that is that it, it enables us to essentially hide this warehouse. So you can't see it all that well from customer facing areas, and you certainly can't see it from the road, and it sits below the level of the trees in the surrounding area, so it's essentially a hidden warehouse that's also 80,000 square feet. So pace of construction, necessity of construction, quality of construction, and then blending in with the environment are all things that make us really, really proud of this warehouse. So I wanna show you more of it. There's a lot of granular detail in this warehouse. We could probably, probably spend several hours down here. Michael and I are gonna do our best to give you a, a grand overview and then there'll be certain sections of it like the distillery and the coffee roastery and the barrel program that we'll spend more time on in another video. So if you want to see that, make sure you subscribe to the channel. Let's, let's keep rolling. Oh, hi. Welcome to the distillery. As I just mentioned, this is going to be a, another video in and of itself. We're gonna look at the distillery in great detail. For the purposes of this video, I just want you to know that it's inside the warehouse. It was in late 2020, early 2021 that we constructed the distillery very, very quickly. Come to find out the fire code as it relates to a distillery is very intense. But again, a great point of pride for us here at Treehouse is that we mash, ferment, distill, age, and care for all of our spirits. We don't outsource it to anybody. A lot of the ingredients that we utilize are local. A lot of the ingredients that we utilize, we actually grow ourselves. So it's a great point of pride for us and we think that that shows in your glass when you get to enjoy Treehouse Spirits. Meg and Nicole, two of our distilling assistants are here. Uh, Nicole. Hi Meg. Looks like Meg's bottling some brown spirit, which I can't wait to hear what that is. Oh, I think it's apple brandy. Shh, don't talk about that. And then Nicole and John are distilling on the small still over here. This guy right here is a 2,000 liter Carl still, which was engineered specifically for us over in Germany. And then over to the right is the experimental pilot batch still, which is a 200 liter still that is, is much more manually controlled. But either way, this setup right here enables us to make every type of spirit that we could ever imagine. In the big still right now, we have neutral grain spirit. We talked about this in the cellar video, which again, if you haven't seen it, we'll link it below. All of our neutral grain spirit is made utilizing locally grown and malted barley. We, we mash it and ferment it upstairs. It comes downstairs, comes through the still, comes out the other side, beautiful vodka. Nicole, I believe, is working on white whiskey right now, which will become bourbon. It's gonna make its way into new American oak barrels. Right over here, we have our 4,000 liter fermenters with agitation. These guys are all glycol controlled. And again, we have manual temperature control on the wall. All this stuff here is very similar to what you've seen upstairs in the brewery, but down here in the distillery, it's, it's specific to what we need here with the agitation and things like that. So there's just a few more things I wanna point out to you guys while we're in here. I did confirm that Megan is bottling our first batch of apple brandy, by the way. I think that's coming out in the next several days or weeks. You're not gonna to wanna to miss it when it comes out. We don't have much of it. I mentioned as we came into the room that this, you know, it was a very expensive construction. The way to think about this room, it's essentially a bomb shelter. All types of fire suppression, HVAC systems to ensure that any ethanol vapors don't ignite. All these rooms contain similar types of attributes to enable us to store goods as they're in process. The room on the left is uh, finished goods storage. You can see these guys have stuff lined up right here making its way over into finished goods. These are different variants of our cola coffee liqueur, which we actually announced for the first time today. And by the time this video drops, we'll have four of those out, which is very cool. This room right here in the middle is in process. So any spirits that are have either been distilled in our conditioning or our low wines version of our distillate are, are waiting in that room to be in process. And then the last room on the end, which I'll tease you with it, it's the, our favorite room in the distillery, quite obviously. It is the barrel room. And it, as of this moment, it's kind of starting to burst at the seams. So in the distillery rundown video, we'll take a walk in there and we'll taste through some barrels and we'll show you guys what's going on in there. But it's kind of all we wanted to show you in the distillery. We're gonna keep making our way on. 
I like this walking through the door thing with the, with the microphone set up. This is cool. Nate, Nate Untethered. So welcome to the coffee area. Uh, in, in the previous video, the uh, brew house run through, we talked about our malt silo and how we repurpose that into our own cold brew extraction device. So in the coffee video, we talk about how we utilize the Kyoto method, which is essentially a sparging methodology for extracting our cold brew. The maintenance team here at Treehouse was able to take our old, old, our old mall hopper and make our own, our own in-house proprietary cold brew extraction device, which is what you're looking at right now as we make our way into the coffee roastery. Yeah, so this is, I just want to show you guys the coffee roasting area. We have some pilot batch cold brew setups right here. We have a little QC area here in the corner. Again, we got the bucket program. Looks like David's over here roasting. We're, we're gonna show you guys in great detail the entire coffee roasting area, but I just wanna show you for the purposes of this video what we have down here. We have three roasters. We have a 15 kilogram, a 35 kilogram, and a 70 kilogram roaster. All these roasters are highly efficient, highly consistent, provide super detailed feedback control so that David can make adjustments on the fly to that roast curve and make sure that roasts from one batch to the other are, are super locked in. We've got some a cupping area that enables us to do source, test, trial, and taste green beans before they make their way to us. And then we have a bagging area, a finished goods area, and then a small storage area uh, for our coffee beans. Again, I know this is a very high level overview, but in a, in a future video, we'll come down here and talk about our roasters, how they work, the, the reason that we chose them over, over other roasters and the, the fine minutia of the cold brew program. But for the purposes of the warehouse video, we're just gonna take a quick look at it and then we're gonna keep moving. All right, so we're making our way into the heart of the warehouse. It's an 80,000 square foot warehouse. I think we have 4,800 storage bays and that doesn't include some of the label bays that we actually split in half. These rows are four high for the fork truck. I think the fork truck's got to go up 22 feet for the highest row. So again, 4,800 roughly storage bays within the warehouse, 25 rows of uh, racks, and just a lot of room for us to store things so we have them on hand when we need them. You see some storage here on the right for the coffee program. We have some green bean stuff that's waiting to be roasted. We're going to make our way right into the good stuff. We've got some new kegs that came in recently. We're always growing with our external tap rooms and those requirements are growing by the day. Oh baby, this is one of my favorite places in the brewery, right? This is creative hallway, creative alley. I mentioned again upstairs that we built this warehouse to have ultimate creative flexibility by having things on hand. At any one time, Treehouse will have between 30 and 100 different beers available. In order for that to be the case, we have to have all kinds of malt, grain, adjuncts, oats, brewing salts, whatever we could utilize on a week-to-week -week basis, we need to have it on hand. And that was one of the sole purposes to have this warehouse. So not only that, but being able to avoid supply chain strife, you'll notice that we have tons of super sacks. Super sacks come from Germany. They have to come across the Atlantic Ocean. Shipping was completely on the fritz as of six months ago. So we probably have too many super sacks right now. We're gonna go ahead and work our way through those. But again, this grain storage area just gives us the creative freedom to brew what we want when we want to. Oftentimes I'll come down here in moments of inspiration trying to look for a grain we maybe haven't used in a little while and then utilize it. Yeah, so we have caramel, Vienna malt. Oh, this is cool. This is um, cologne type malt. We utilize that in Outlier, our Kolsch, trying to be as authentic as possible. Uh, Dingemans is a brand that we really appreciate. Belgian malt. White wheat malt from our friends at RAR. Pale chocolate malt. We've got roasted barley, regular roasted barley. You know, we've talked a lot in these videos about how Treehouse is the world's largest homebrew setup. You know, way back in the day, I used to go to the homebrew store and I'd look at what they had on the shelf and I would draw inspiration from it. Well, this warehouse is much like our own homebrew store, except it's on a commercial scale. So we often come down here and draw inspiration from this. Uh, it's set up for creativity and flexibility. And we just love the freedom of being able to make what we want when we want to. All right, what else do we have down here? The label aisle.
This is probably top three aisle in the warehouse if I had to rate them. Can aisle and then grain aisle and then maybe label aisle not too far behind it. This aisle contains everything that we've ever made that we've packaged and labeled. Most of what we've packaged and labeled we always have a little bit extra of because our yields are not always what we expect and we also account for a little bit of potential loss. So this is the Treehouse Library. This is the Treehouse Archive. You're probably looking at the TV right now like, what is that one? I think that that's... I know that I would be, and frankly, I come down here and I, I, we draw inspiration from this aisle, trying to look to our past to think about what we haven't brewed in a long time that maybe we should be brewing. What's a good example of that right now? Let me see, what do we have? New Day, that's cool. That's a extra kettle and dry hop rendition of spring that will be coming out probably relatively soon. Double Shot Technicolor, that was cool. That was a one-off coffee that we made a batch of Double Shot for. Harmony, Harmony's all New Zealand single IPA brewed with Nelson, we love that. I mean, Emperor Julius, Sorbet King, Coquito, this was a big hit around the holidays. Thrice Cream, that was a cool project that was also super successful. Coco King, Juice Project, Citra and Zappa, you guys are probably screaming at the TV right now. Human Condition, right, we actually have a batch of that in the works right now. Triple J Juice Project, regular Juice Project. Oh, look at this, love. Hey guys, dudes, I know you're watching right now and you're thinking I haven't got my wife roses for Valentine's Day. Well, there you go. Take a screenshot and, and text it to her. She loves you, she loves you. Double shot wish list, love that label. Triple D Double Ganger, if you haven't had it yet, you need to have it. I mean, there's so much inspiration down here, so much history, we're only on the first row, Michael. Do I need to get a ladder and climb up there to talk about all this shit? Pardon my French, sorry mom. I don't even know what some of this stuff is. <laughs> Tree of Life, classic, brisk, uh, Oak Condition Whisper, our Oktoberfest. I can't wait for you to come around again. All the Queen Machine variants. Got the Green Machine, which is classic, super vivid. Oh my God, dude, that's funny. So that's a label that we printed because we thought the Celtics were gonna win the championship last year. It's a beer called We Are The Champions and it has like the Celtics banner in green and white with the year 2022 on it. At least it's not a tattoo. All right, so moving on from labels. We could spend a lot of time over there for sure. Again, there's all sorts of nooks and crannies in this warehouse. We'll point out just a few of them. In this area here, we have a lot of merchandise goods storage. This section right here, we actually have our online sales department and manager. I think Jackie's right there. That little pod right there was set up for our online sales shipment and fulfillment. If you're not aware, we can ship goods to you. Our coffee, we can ship directly to you and all of our merchandise stuff, we can ship directly to you. And all that stuff is stored right over here. In this area over here is the loading dock. Again, warehouse sort of uh, structural stuff to talk about. We have four loading bays, um, all accessible by full length 53 foot truck. Again, just wanted to point this out to you. I think this is kind of cool. If you're unfamiliar with Treehouse history, this little guy right here is actually our second commercial brew house. We started on a 10 gallon Coleman pot and then we made the investment with a home equity line of credit to the tune of $10,000 for this commercial brewing device. This is how Treehouse started. Michael, if you don't mind backing up, it's kind of cool to look at this guy in the context of what we have become. Uh, this is how it started and kind of, kind of this is how it's going. Pretty, pretty fun stuff. Good, important message to anybody watching at home, whether you're a brewer or you're considering starting your own business or anything like that. We were often told that you cannot start a brewery on something this size. It's not possible. You will go bankrupt. We prove people wrong. Our message to you is don't listen to detractors. Block out the noise. Focus on the positive and believe in yourself. Another little piece of treehouse history right here. This is our technically third commercial brew house and the one that I feel the greatest affinity toward. I brewed more batches of beer on this thing that I care to think about and it's where I and sort of Treehouse learned to scale things on a commercial scale and we knew that essentially when we went from the brew magic to this guy and we were able to replicate from there to here we knew that we could rep replicate from here and up and that gave us the confidence to move forward so lots of great memories from this guy 
I hope we haven't seen the last of it. Uh, we've actually hooked it up here a couple of times and had some false starts, but at some point in the future, this guy will see new life. And when that day comes, I will not have been more happy. All right, so we're gonna make our way over to the barrels. And before we do that, we're just gonna rapid fire through some of this gargantuan warehouse and show you some odds and ends. Bottle storage. Label storage. Grain storage. Maintenance replacement parts. Merchandise glassware. Proper glassware. Retail merchandise. A Jamie in the wild. Hi. Additional keg storage. Additional merchandise storage. Odds and ends. All right, so one of the last things I want to show you guys, again, we've kind of breezed through the warehouse. There's a ton to see here. There's a ton of actual in-process, craft-worthy projects that the team works on here at Treehouse. And one of those things is our barrel program. All of our storage for our barrel program takes place in the warehouse. We have three years of archival beer in process right now, stuff that was brewed as far back as 2020, 21, 22, and as recently as barrel this week. We have aging right here. We have a broad variety of port barrel, bourbon barrel, wine barrel, a whiskey barrel, of varying provenances and ages, all uh, in this aisle right here. And Dan, our barrel program manager, is around the corner. We're going to take a, a deep dive in terms of what we do and how we do it. And we'll talk about that in more detail. But for the purposes of this video, I just wanted to say, here's our warehouse and here's our barrel program. Uh, we've got barrels rocking on both sides. On the right and left hand side, we've got over a thousand in process right now. Again, we've had good luck with uh, barrel suppliers and barrel vendors. We've got great relationships. Interestingly, some of our very favorite barrel aged spirits have come from spirits that we have actually aged in brand new oak barrels. And some of that stuff is in this program as well. And you'll see that in the future. All right, let's see what else we got over here. Again, I could go crazy talking about what's on all these racks. We used to have go-karts in here before we had all these big racks up, but so in the back left corner of the warehouse, we have the gym area. Staff gym here in Charlton. If you want to get swole, if you want to run on the treadmill, if you just want to look at yourself in the mirror or hang out by yourself, this back left-hand corner of the warehouse can, can give you all of those opportunities. So actually have some pretty legit stuff here, power lifting rack, a couple body masters, cable setups, and then dumbbells up to 100 pounds. Make sure you only lift what you can lift. Be safe out there. Eat your protein, one gram per pound of body weight per day, and not too many carbohydrates. And of course, everybody's favorite area in the warehouse, the area that inspired the can wall entry level in, in Deerfield. All of our proper good and blank can storage is in this area of the warehouse right here. This was originally one of the primary reasons for constructing the warehouse. So Michael and I are chilling in the edit suite right now and he wanted to know, why do you need an entire warehouse for a printed can? And the reason for that is that the printed can manufacturers require that you have a single full truckload of cans. So 25 pallets times 6,224 cans means a truckload. So if you have 20 different brands that require a proper can, that means you need space for 20 truckloads worth of cans. The team here has always thought that a proper can just has a more finished appeal to it. It has kind of a more intentional and it just makes us feel proud to put our beer in a proper can. So we try to utilize them for as many of our core brands as possible. Obviously we have Haze and Doppelganger and Juice Machine and Super Treat, Hurricane, Bright Citra, Very Hazy, Perfect Storm, got some lights on, Green, King Julius, Tornado, Snow, Seasonal IPA, Alter Ego, we got Summer Seasonal uh, IPA, which is coming out soon. But again, this, this just fills us with pride. I think that the colorful cans are something that identify Treehouse from the very beginning and hopefully they do long into the future. So for anybody that's ever come into the warehouse and gotten a tour, this is always the section where they take selfies or they want to have their picture taken. In fact, we've had people get married down here, which is kind of cool. But again, wanted to show this to you guys, Treehouse Can Alley. We love the way that it looks down here. It gives us inspiration to get our beers right for you when we make them and when we present them to you. All right, we're getting to the end of the warehouse tour. We've really bombed through it here, hopefully kept it condensed. Of course, I want to show you guys finished goods storage. 
We had showed this to you guys in the packaging line video, but I want to show it to you one more time. It also, we make our way all the way to the corner over here. It ties together kind of a finished loop of something we had talked about in the brew house video, which was the in process hops cooler upstairs. And then this is kind of the main hop, hop cooler storage. Again, we talk about opportunity here. We talk about freedom to make what we want to make and having hops on hand goes hand in hand with that. We just have pallets upon pallets of hops here ready to go. God, I love seeing this. This is so cool. Got some brand new fresh galaxy that came in, brand new fresh mosaic. Our brand new citrus selections have come in. Got some experimental hop extract things that we're playing with right there. Brand new Simcoe lots are in. All this year's brand new selections are starting to roll in, making those beers really pop, really fresh, really bright. Really, really loving what we're working with right now classic Nelson hops. We're actually making our way down to New Zealand in a couple of weeks, checking with those guys to see how they're doing. Possibility, creative freedom, no constraints are all the types of things that we work really hard on here at Treehouse. And all this investment, all this money, all this time, all this energy just enables us to be who we are at scale and never change as we grow with that same sort of childlike excitement for brewing that we've always had. So. Again, wanted to show this to you guys. We're gonna make our way out. All right, guys, thanks for watching. Uh, we're having a lot of fun making these videos and one of the primary reasons that we are making them, hopefully, is to share with you guys the way we think about things, the way that we operate. We think it's pretty unique. We put the product first and we put creativity first in spite of any constraints that that might create. We pour our hearts and souls into what we do, and we hope you can appreciate that. So I'm, I'm standing right now in the distillery barrel room. This is a little preview for the next video. We got a quick look at the distillery in this video. The next video will be a deep dive. If you're enjoying what you're seeing, we ask that you subscribe to the channel. Certainly your comments are appreciated, and they also inform our future content, so thank you for that. Thanks again for watching. Be well, be good to each other. We'll see you in the next one. Still rolling, buddy?